Uh, I'm Mayor R.T. Ryback, and uh, we wanted to welcome you all here for an event that is um, uh, in Minneapolis City Hall, but is a, an event that is brought to us by two incredible legends in our state, Vice President Walter Mondale and Governor Arnie Carlson. Thank you, uh, Mayor Ryback. It's a joy to be with my old friend, Governor Harry Carlson, again to talk about this severe crisis that we face as Minnesotans with a deadlock uh, train wreck in our budgetary process. What the Governor, governor and I are, have done here is to assemble a group of the state's most respected seasoned specialists on the state budgets, state policy making, uh, state leadership, charging them with the task of quickly assembling a proposal that we hope will have the power and strength to move this process off dead center. They will be consulting with specialists in the state government. They are free to consult with specialists in the state legislature, others. Uh, they are free to proceed as they wish. Um, I've been around this state for a long time, my whole life. Like you, I love Minnesota. I think we are special. I think that this state has always been a little bit different, and as far as I'm concerned, better than other states. Today we're being challenged because we must make government work effectively and efficiently and to care if we're going to be the kind of Minnesota that educates her children, builds a future for our state, and an environment where we can rejoice in the joy of being Minnesotans. I'm afraid that if we don't reassert America, Minnesota's ability to think and create in this crisis, that we will be overwhelmed by national pressures to take part in this national harsh ideological debate that we see in the nation's capital and all over the country. I hope that Minnesota can do it differently, but we're under a severe time pressure. There's thousands of people that are dependent upon a quick decision to get our government back working. And um, I congratulate the members of this committee. I have Somebody just went off the air. Um, I congratulate uh, them for doing this, and we fully support their efforts. Now I turn the mic over to Governor, Governor Ernie Carlson. Would you like to be on this program? <laughs> well, well, first of all, I very much want to thank the Vice President uh, for his willingness to step forward and buy the kind of leadership that I think all of us in Minnesota very much appreciate and feel is very needed. Minnesota, to the best of my knowledge, has never gone through this kind of a broad shutdown. And there isn't any one of us here uh, that can predict uh, when that shutdown will come to an end. So the process uh, that the Vice President has laid out uh, is essential, essential in the sense that our hope is that through the talents and competency of this committee, uh, we could have some kind of a proposal before the end of the week. And this would put before the people of Minnesota and before the governor and the legislature a third approach. And considering the competency of the members of the committee, uh, I think you will agree uh, this is as good a group as could be assembled, uh, particularly considering uh, the shortness of time. Uh, we, excuse me, uh, we had hoped uh, to have Pam Wheelock as a member. Uh, we have been informed that she is climbing Mount Kilimanjaro. Uh, 
and will be unable to attend, but she will be with us in spirit. Uh, I also contacted uh, Senator David Durenberger. Uh, he is in California and unable to come back for this news conference, but he very much is supportive uh, of the efforts uh, that we're engaged in today. Let me, if I may, one, reinforce the comments that the Vice President made about the nationalization of the Minnesota shutdown. Our fear, and it's a fear that I've shared with many people, our fear is that large sums of money, large interests will come into Minnesota and cause a freezing of attitude and a digging in, a retrenchment, if you will, making it very, very difficult for compromise uh, to be a reality. And so swiftness in that sense is very vital. Secondly, swiftness is required because of the enormity of the pain uh, that is causing employees, their families, but all those who are dependent upon governmental services, be it the shutdown on road construction and road maintenance, uh, all the way uh, to Canterbury, but the likelihood that this will also impact uh, all forms of education if we get into a protracted uh, dispute. Now, in terms of the committee, one, the administrator for that committee will be the Commissioner of Management and Budget, James Showalter. He is a career financial analyst. Uh, he served as the assistant commissioner under Governor Plenty, and if I recall correctly, was also the budget director. So he is not seen as a partisan player, but one who is responsible for providing to the committee accurate and current data. I met with the governor uh, for the purpose of making certain that this committee would have ongoing access uh, to that department. He assured me that that would take place, and we expect the committee process to begin tomorrow morning. And as I indicated, it's my personal hope that their work will wind up before the end of this week. The second part is that there's no stipulation uh, placed upon the committee. Uh, neither the Vice President nor I will serve on the committee. Uh, you're welcome, if you will, to give us your input, but that's exactly where it will end. Uh, but I do anticipate that this committee, uh, with their insights, uh, will understand that their goal is to maximize flexibility and maximize options and possibly come up with a plan that will be slightly distasteful to both sides. If it's sufficiently distasteful, uh, we know uh, that we have succeeded. Uh, but I think it is essential that we have a third option. I thought Congressman Frenzel in yesterday's paper made a very astute and compelling observation, which is very disturbing, and that is that he was looking at Congress, but the same observation could be said of Minnesota, and that is that we have the left and we have the right, but we have a weakened middle, and it's the middle that tends to provide the ability to compromise and to bring sides together and to bring about resolution. Uh, let me, if I may, on that note, end, and I want you to feel free, and I'm sure you will, uh, to raise whatever questions you so wish. But let me also thank Mayor Ryback and his staff for working over the weekend. We had a terrible time uh, trying to contact people over the weekend. <laughs> and <laughs> we relied very heavily on the mayor and his office, and we are very, very grateful for the work that they have done. Thank you. Have you received any support or criticism? Pardon me? Have you received any criticism or support from either party, and do you legitimately think that this commission will lead to ending this uh, I talked to the uh, majority leader of the Senate, and she would have preferred that Mr. Mondale and I negotiate directly uh, with them, but we're not in this to negotiate. Uh, we're in this to provide a third alternative. Uh, and as I indicated before, I'm not going to suggest that either the legislature or the governor will stand up and give us a standing ovation. But I do think it will give the public uh, 
another option to consider in the legislature and the governor likewise. I would anticipate their ultimate support. Yes, sir. I had a proposal out last week to have a referendum and to have the governor and the AFL put their plan up and the Republicans put their plan up and to have the people vote to choose one or the other. What do you think of that idea? Do you think that it would make sense possibly to take your plan and put it up for a referendum? And in that way, both sides could say that they are following the will of the people by majority vote. Well, I, I would respond in two ways. Uh, the first is that time is of the essence, and your process would not allow for time. Uh, the second is that we have to learn to make representative government work. We truly do. Uh, but be that as it may, I applaud your, your thought. But bear in mind, the time frame is of the essence right now. Governor, with all due respect, Republicans have already started saying that you're not a Republican and therefore this isn't a bipartisan group. How do you react to that criticism? Well, the good news from their perspective is that I will not sit on the commission. <laughs> <laughs> Whose fault is it? I think that's a subject that we should discuss after resolution, not during and not before. Governor, can you talk about formation of the committee, how you guys chose the people for this committee, how many members there will be. Can you talk about that process a little Well, the, the, the first criteria that we put forth was good looks. <laughs> <laughs> what we actually wanted, and, and our thought process was really quite simple, and I suspect our critics will accuse us of being terribly simplistic. One, we wanted the co-chairs to be people who had significant legislative experience and understood the nuances of the legislature, the process, et cetera, and also had good backgrounds in the area of finance. Two, we wanted two people, at least, we were hoping for three, uh, that had served as commissioners of finance. And I think it's fair to say that in John Gunyu and Jake Kudrowski, uh, we have two of the most distinguished that Minnesota has had, certainly in my lifetime. Uh, they bring also an added piece uh, to the discussion, and that is they have been sounding the alarm bells for years about the ongoing structural deficit. So my hope is that when they do complete their report, part one will be the current deficit, part two will be the structural deficit, not necessarily in terms of how you solve it, because I don't think they'll do that, but the importance of that in the request that the governor appoint a commission to deal and then come back in 2014. And, and let me make a point here that is so critical, and that is when you get into the uh, expenditure side of a budget and you say we're going to make an arbitrary cut, you have to be very careful that that reduction is made along with reform. And under the current system, you have a lack of reform and only cuts. And in some cases, the consequences would frankly be devastating. My personal pet peeve, and I'll probably share it with you now, is that I don't think the current system is operable in today's environment. And by that I mean a governor and a legislature get elected in November. By the end of January, the governor is expected to submit a detailed budget, which is approximately one volume this thick and one volume that thick. Uh, by the end of January, or possibly as late as early February, and the result is that governors over the years tend to dust off the prior budget, uh, update it a little bit, and submit it. And so the result is you're not able to affect the kinds of reforms and the kinds of changes that you want. And my hope will be that we can put together a constitutional amendment that allows for a different time frame so a new governor, a new legislature, have time to focus on reforms. The second part, and I want to get back to Gunyu and Kudrowski, is that they have tremendous respect for local governance. Most of the money that comes into St. Paul, roughly 80, 85 percent of it, uh, goes out back in one form or the other to local governance. And it's imperative that local governmental officials also be part of the solution as well. So that will be on the second phase of it. Just, just one point. I spent a 
many, many years in Washington, some of them in the state capitol, trying to resolve differences that could have led to a breakdown. And in every case, I found that a spirit of compromise was necessary. We hear that all the time. Uh, there can be cheap compromises that nobody is for. But we're in a place where both sides have to sit down and think freshly about how we can come out with a result that serves Minnesota. In picking this plan committee, we were not trying to pick Democratic leaders or Republican leaders to keep the struggle going. We have enough of that. We were trying to find people with such superb professional backgrounds and such exemplary roles in impartial public leadership that they could be listened to and their recommendations uh, become influential in a process that is now frozen. Uh, if you read the backgrounds of each of them, you will see that's exactly what the governor and I tried to do. And I have every confidence that they're going to come up with a superb plan. When you talk about putting a committee together and you say that it gives the people a third option, how does that square with lawmakers who are trying to get this done today? Well, we're in a deadlock. Uh, and the government has broken down. We need to get it unfrozen and get on a course that's solid and positive. And it, we, we have to find a process that the public can see and respect that will be in the public sector that will help move us in that direction. Could you talk a little bit more about the genesis of this? Is this something that Governor Dayton asked you to put together? And secondarily, you just talked about the yeah, public. Yeah, well, I'm going to ask Arnie to get involved in this too. These, these, these are our uh, recommendations that Arnie and I have worked on together. He was the principal leader, but we worked on it together, and I have fully endorsed it. I had uh, been putting through my blog this suggestion now for a couple of weeks. And, and the reason being this, uh, and I think the Vice President has articulated it extremely well, and that is when the process loses the ability to be flexible to affect compromise, then you have to have an outside party. In business, it may be some form of mediation uh, or arbitration, whatever it may be. But you need that kind of a process to take place. Uh, both sides are now deadlocked. In the event uh, that the governor and the legislature are able to resolve the problem today, tomorrow, then this committee has no standing, and they just simply go ahead and affect their solution. So our hope is that they do precisely that. Uh, but assuming that that does not take place, our hope is that by the conclusion of this week, this committee will report. Uh, and again, I do want to stress the, the fact that this committee was brought together for the purpose of competency. We we're not into political balancing or geographic balancing or whatever. We try to do the best we can. I thought uh, that one of you would raise the question why we wanted Minnesota's outstanding cowboy uh, on the committee. Uh, and the, re the answer is, he knows how to throw the bolt. Uh, <laughs> we need a little bit of that. Okay. So is, is the committee report due on Friday? Is that right? Uh, the, the question is, is the committee report due on Friday? No, there is no due date. It's just my personal and the vice president's personal hope that they will conclude by that time. My guess is they will. Sorry. Did did the governor ask you to put this? Oh, you asked me for the governor. No, the governor did not. I tried to mention that, that I put this out in my blogs prior uh, to, to any consultation with anybody. And then in terms of transparency and openness to the public, how will this group operate? Will you have public meetings? Where will you meet? Who will no, this group has, has an obligation uh, to meet unto itself. Uh, they will make their pronouncements when they're ready. So, Governor, the, the two of you don't, don't agree on uh, what we're doing. I'm sorry, we don't what? The two of you don't agree on Governor Dayton's uh, preferred means of raising revenue in the short term, the income tax on the high school. No, we, we didn't touch on that subject at all. Have you thought about if you had a checklist 
of, of options? It, it's not our place to do that. We, we, we agreed that we would focus strictly on trying to put together a, a process that could expedite a conclusion, and that's really where we're at. Uh, when the debate ends, I'm sure the Vice President will share with you his thoughts, and I'll be happy to share with you my thoughts. But at the moment, the focus is to bring about resolution. So there will be regular access to Showalter? Will Showalter be involved in each meeting? Can you talk about that? Uh, that would be up to the committee to decide, but my best guess is yes, he will be part of each and every session. Doesn't his involvement, wouldn't that tend to skew the kind of information? He's also the governor's chief advisor, isn't he? One of the parties in a position to have a lot of influence with his committee? The last thing that one can do in the area of governance or politics is have any item that is perfectly without any partisan concerns. You're always going to have that. Because your appointing authority may have partisan concerns. The goal here was to focus on the professionalism of all people involved to make sure that there's a high level of confidence and that the ultimate report that they submit is one that you and I would agree is highly intelligent. Bear in mind, it's interesting that you haven't raised one question about the business people sitting on this committee. And they are not known to be flaming liberals. Uh, so if you wanted to argue balance, I think I'd be more inclined to go the other way than the, than the direction you've gone in. Both of them are very, very confident, extraordinarily well thought of, and both have a great background in job creation. And one of the ultimate goals of any budget ought to be to create a climate that's conducive to job growth. And that's one of the areas where they will focus. Are either of you going to be lobbying lawmakers to adopt this plan? No, at the conclusion of this news conference, we disappear. Uh, <laughs> That's it. Thank you. Yes. We ride into the sunset, as so many people would hope we have done years ago. Well, the ultimate decision is made by elected officials, and that's what the governance uh, is always about. I don't think you really want to suggest that unelected people can't participate in the governance of their society. They can. And that's what this is about. This is about bringing competent, able people to have an impact that could possibly uh, prevent an elongated shutdown. I would frankly recommend the same thing on the national level as well. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks. Let, let me, if I may, just make some, a, a concluding comment. I personally think the state of Minnesota is blessed uh, in having a person of the stature and competence and quality of a Walter Mondale. And that's something that we ought not to miss. And by that I mean, when he puts forward a proposal that is as thoughtful as this, sees this as a way to avoid continued gridlock, we, the public, should stand up and applaud. And I mean that most sincerely. I can't think of any treasure that Minnesota has that is greater than that of the Vice President. Thank you.